Friday Floss Tube. It is Friday, January 3rd, and I've missed you. My name is Caroline, and this is uh, a channel all about crafting with a heavy emphasis on cross stitch. And on Friday, I like to do a Stitch With Me video where I work on my current project and we just have a bit of a visit, a bit of a chat. My dog Luna is asleep on the couch beside me. So you're gonna hear maybe some snoring or some heavy breathing. She's quite, quite happy to be sat right beside me while I'm chatting. So I'll try to put in a picture of her at the end. Oh, so as you can see, for those of you who know this piece well, um, and those of you who are new, this is a landmark tapestries and charts design called Savon. And I will put a link to the place that your, your best bet is to find this pattern uh, from www.celtichobbies.com. And I mentioned this, uh, mentioned this a few days ago, but for those who didn't see that video, these are, there are companion pieces in this series of, of this pillow collection. And there are two colorways for each pattern. So if Savon happens to be out of stock, if you look for the pattern called Arjesh, A-R-J-E-S-H, it will give you exactly the same pattern, just with a different colorway. And if you would like to stitch the Savon colorway, you can just send me a message. Send me an email, caroline at evertoke.com. Show me a picture of your purchased Arjesh pattern, and I will send you a photo of the uh, thread list for Savon so that you can stitch it however you want. These patterns are hard to find. They're hard to come by. That's why I'm offering that because I feel as, you know, if, you, if you've purchased a copy of it, you should be able to uh, stitch it the way you want. And really these patterns are hard to, hard to get. So it looks a little bit different than the last time I showed it the last time I was working on it. Sorry, I had to reset the camera angle there. I knocked my holder for my phone and it went all askew. Many of you know Jen Lee, uh, Quirks and Stitches, here on YouTube and also Instagram. She uh, is the brains behind the hashtag 24 hours of cross stitch challenge that many of us love to participate in and late last year she came up with a planner hashtag 24 hours t 24 h o c s 24 hours of cross stitch and it's a yearly planner with motivation and acrostics for you to fill out little challenges, ways to encourage you to uh, work your way through those projects. And I have purchased, I, I purchased it in December and I wanted to just show you a few of the pages that I've just started working on. Now I do have Jen's permission. I did message her and ask her if it would be okay because, you know, obviously I'm showing a few pages of a, a a product that she is selling so I wanted to make sure that that would be okay with her so I do have her permission to share a little bit with you and I just wanted to kind of sing its praises a little bit because I think it's really gonna I think it's going to be really an encouraging way for me to keep track of my stitching this year now I think instead of taking that to the back I'm just gonna leave it on my minder there and I'll sew it in after I'm done chatting with you. As you can see, I've preloaded a couple of needles here so that I can just do some fill in and chat. So I've got it here on my lap. So I just, I'll show you a little bit about it. Um, cover page. This, this, is, this is a tome. I mean, there is a lot of planning pages in this book. 
it's $12 US to purchase and let me show you I'm gonna show you, this is the first page that shows you what you get in the planner so year-long trackers ABC finish challenge monthly focus trackers there's a page to keep track of your finishes um, color-coded monthly breakdowns so if you don't have a color printer you and you don't have to print it in color but you can take it to you know Staples or Business Depot and have it printed out there um, I have a an inexpensive color printer so it's mostly just the headline the the tops of the pages that are printed in color most of it is black and white so you, it shouldn't use too much ink uh, the acrostic challenge there's a cat monthly calendar holiday calendar a just for fun list monthly end recap and then there are some extra printables which I love because you see this marathon planning and tracking pages she's already planned the first 24 hour event and it's going to be happening at the end of January and I fully intend on participating so I'm kind of excited about that so I'm going to be using my planner page to fill that in blank calendar holidays and list templates and I love that she has included a page of you know those fun like yesterday was world introvert day so she includes a page that tells you what every day of the year is and that's I think that's just so fun I love that so the one page in particular that I wanted to show you that I am so excited about is the very first one and this is the year-long ABC challenge I have been trying for a few years now and not trying very hard because I didn't work on it at all last year was my Santa's village so I am in a stitch along with Melanie from uh, soulful stitching and our hashtag is hashtag soulful off the grid Santa's village Sal so if you'd like to join in with us anyone is welcome doesn't matter at what stage of the game you're in this is loosey-goosey we are trying to have it done by the end of the year and so that is the one piece that I would be very disappointed in myself if I didn't finish it this year so I'm gonna use this one page to challenge myself to finish up my Santa's village and so with the acrostic you choose you can either choose 12 or 24 letters and associate each of those letters with you know something to do with your project and then you assign each of those letters a task so I haven't gone through and assigned my task yet but it can be you can assign a time challenge or stitches number of stitches tracked that sort of thing so most likely I'm going to be challenging myself to do 480 minutes which is what is that eight hours yeah that's eight hours on each of my challenges and then once I've done two of them I should have a better idea of how much of the project eight hours will get done so I've oh my god finished this already <laughs> so you know it can just be just a little bit of a fun way to encourage yourself and then for each 480 minutes tracked then I get to tick off a box which suits my personality do you know what I mean a little bit of a perfectionist but if I don't have it, it's very satisfying to tick it off right so I'm super excited to get to this so that's that and then the other page that I wanted to show you there is a monthly focus tracker now I'm going to be using this planner the way that I work which is if you give me too much at once I'm overwhelmed I like one step at a time so I have only taken these pages that I have here this is just January I have put the rest of the planner in a drawer over in my my bookshelf where in my sewing studio I know where it is and it's all in one spot but I've only taken January out and I'm going to be putting January into a binder and then as I approach each new month the next month of the planner will be added in to help me 
And instead of planning all of it at the beginning of the month, I'm kind of going to be writing and filling this in as I go. So there's a monthly, there's a month, there's the monthly calendar, okay? So I'm keeping track on day one, I had my new start, and then the last two days I've worked on Savon. So pretty straightforward, right? And then it gives you a way to look back and, and see what you did and what you accomplished throughout the year. So I really, I can't say enough good things about this planner. I'm super thrilled that I purchased it. I think it's worth, it is certainly um, value for money at $12 and a way to really sort of put your thoughts about what you'd like to accomplish down on paper. And also, you know, looking back on it in December at the end of 2020 and seeing what we did, I think that's kind of fun. So thank you to Jen Lee for, first of all, coming up with the whole 24 hours of cross-stitch. Amazing, fun things that we get to do and also developing this planner. And uh, if I can encourage a few other people out there to give it a whirl, then hopefully you'll join with me in filling out that planner. All right, so let's put a few more stitches in. So like I mentioned, uh, the last stitch with me that I did, I was also working on Savon, and I mentioned that this year for me, what I would really like to do is try to have a goal for each new whip that I pick up and work on because I really want to make a substantial dent in the large scale projects that I have um, underway. And I'd like to complete a few of them. I have some, some absolutely gorgeous whips in my stack that I would really love to challenge myself to, if not finish them this year, to actually make substantial progress on them. So what I'm doing is because I also know my own tendency of not wanting to work on the same thing until it's done. I'm challenging myself to take a page from Jen Lee and attach uh, the number 24 to it. So I will be choosing a large scale project from my whip pile and spending 24 hours actual stitching time on it before moving on to the next project. And then I'm going to cycle through, maybe, I had said four or five, but you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna put any rules on that. I'm going to work on what I want to work on, but I'm gonna have that time, sort of time management attached to it. So I'm using, I'm just using the timer on my phone, and I set it for, uh, well, you actually, you can't set it for 24 hours, which is kind of annoying. You can set it for 23 hours and 59 seconds. And so I started the timer running and that timer will be used strictly for the piece, the large scale piece that I'm working on. And as of now, since I started that timer with this particular go around on Savon, I have now put six hours devoted stitching time into this project. And I think you would agree with me that I've actually made significant progress, which absolutely thrills me to bits. So this part right here, this, um, yeah, right here, this is halfway. So this is halfway up the project. So what I'm going to be really trying to work on diligently is trying to get trying to get completely filled in all the way to the halfway mark. So if we get there, we get there. If not, oh well. And like I showed you on my my planner page there, I'm going to start with having two focus pieces per month. So Savon is the first one and 
when my 24 hours is up on Savon, I'm going to be switching over to one of my other oldest huge works in progress, which is a Sampler Cove piece, and it's called Amtrak. And it is, it, it's, I think it's almost half completed. I can't quite remember. It's been a little while since I looked at it. But that's going to be the next piece that I pick up and work on for, for a 24-hour uh, time frame. And I love working on Amtrak. And I can't actually remember the last time I worked on it. I have a feeling it's been over a year because I don't think I even showed it on Flosstube at all in 2019. I remember showing it in 2018, but my memory could be, well, let's face it, my memory could be faulty. That's possible. So Amtrak by Sampler Cove, it only has three colors in it. I'm using this, uh, it's beautiful floss that I'm using, it's a silk floss. And I'm, I'm now that I've started thinking about it again, and I've seen how much progress I can make with, you know, this, the, the time, timing myself and being focused about it, I'm super excited to get it back out again. And isn't that, isn't that the goal to be excited about what we're already working on? Now, what that means for <laughs> floss tube videos probably means that this year I'm not going to have a ton of exciting finishes on a weekly basis. Let's face it. You know, th these pieces are so huge. There's no way I can have a finish to share with you every week. So, but I, I can't. I can't foresee me not wanting to film, even though you, you know, you're going to be seeing the same pieces a week after week because I, well, I just like to talk to you guys. So, if you'll bear with me this year, and you don't mind too much seeing the same projects, I'm really hoping that you're going to enjoy watching some substantial progress on big scale pieces more so than finishes on smalls. Because I've, I've really, really missed my big pieces. I love working on them. I love seeing them on the wall. They make me happy. So 2020 will be the year of the BAP. And that is a big bottomed project, except you can substitute another word for the bottom, except I can't say that on floss tube. This isn't the fiber friends. Oh, so it's Friday and I am filming this. I'm taking a bit of a break from sewing this morning. Uh, what time is it now? It is, oh, it's 11.30. I've been working on all of the bags that were sold in the shop for the sale that I had, the Boxing Week sale at the end of the year. And the sale was quite busy, so I have lots of bags to make. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who purchased a bag during the sale. And uh, I'm working really hard on getting all of those bags done and out in the mail by the end of next week. So I will be sending out, I think if I've, if I've, uh, I, I go through it quite carefully and I plan out, you know, because I, it's, I can work faster if you sort of batch your tasks. I think that makes sense, right? So if I make all of the drawstrings all at once for all of the drawstring bags that need to be made, if I do, you know, all of, you know, cutting the corners for the, the bags that need to be wedge bags, makes sense, right? Also, the bags that have black bottoms and need to be sewn with black thread, you do all of those at once and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I have batched my tasks and I've organized my sewing schedule and I should be able to get 
uh, two boxes sent out into the post next week one on Monday and then the second one the second one I'm going to try to send out on Thursday instead of Friday but it will really depend on how my sewing goes on Wednesday because not only does the sewing take time packaging and shipping takes a lot of time I tell you that is really that's the one part of small this um, online business that you don't kind of you have to factor in that time because it always takes more time than you think it's going to all right that needle is done and I will sew that in when we're done chatting hopefully this isn't been too crooked for you while we've been chatting uh, so yes two boxes next week and then all of the orders should be out and then I will work on the raffle prize bags and then I get to draw all of the names for um, the raffle winners for those who donated to muscular dystrophy Canada and I will be chatting more about that on Monday floss tube so I'll have some more information about that then Oh, it was such a great month, you guys. Such a great month. I should have the final number from Megan on. Uh, Megan is the fundraising coordinator at Muscular Dystrophy Canada. I should have the final number on Monday. I do know from Patty Break in Newfoundland, my friend Patty, uh, she sold over 380 patterns, you guys. 380 patterns. That's amazing. That is amazing. And, you know, thank you to everyone who donated, purchased auction items, and purchased those patterns. So, speaking of Michelle Bendy and Michelle Bendy's uh, auctions for charity, the charity that she is supporting this month for the month of January is the Michael J. Fox Parkinson's uh, Foundation. And... A little bit again a little bit more about that on Monday but just briefly um, if you're not on Instagram you might not have heard yet that Michelle and her friend lollipop stitches have both designed uh, pa charity patterns as well sort of taking a page from Patty break and they have designed each of them a pattern for where 100% of the proceeds minus administrative and taxes cost, all of that money will be going directly to the foundation, the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Michelle Bendy's pattern is up. I believe Lollipop Stitches pattern is up as well. I have not gone over and purchased that one yet, but it is on my to-do list. I purchased Michelle's pattern last night you can find it on her Etsy shop, Bendy Stitchy Designs, and it is a beautiful um, Michael J. Fox quote. And it's, it's especially meaningful to Michelle at this particular point in her life. And those of you who know her and love her and watch her channel, you know that uh, she's going through some life stuff at the moment and uh, on top of dealing with Wade's cancer and chemo, she is continuing to be just a, a ray of sunshine. And that's, you know, that's gotta be tough. But boy, is she, what, a, what a special, special soul she is. So if I can encourage anyone to pop over to her shop and send her some love, the pattern is $6 American, $6 US, Bendy Stitchy Designs, and again, all of that money is going to the Michael J. Fox Parkinson Research Foundation. I know I've gotten the name of that place wrong, I should get it right, but uh, I will link below to Michelle's pattern as well. If I forget to link to anything, please just, you know, pop a comment in the box. I am terrible at responding to comments. I, tr I try if it's a question that I see right away and I, I try to answer them right away. I read everything. I read everything. 
is sometimes the comments that happen on older videos are, are tricky because they disappear. Uh, and if I can't remember which episode the comment was left on, I, it's impossible for me to find them again. So I'm going to just put this out there. First of all, if you've sent me a question and I have missed it, I apologize. Um, please feel free to send it again. I get a lot of mail. I get a lot of uh, Instagram messages, Facebook messenger messages, uh, you know, you name it. And sometimes I miss stuff and I feel, I feel pretty bad about that. Um, but it's just me here. I don't have a, I guess Luna is my social media coordinator. How's that? And she's kind of useless when it comes to, you know, opposable thumbs and all that. So if I've missed a question that you've sent me, it is not intentional. I apologize. Please feel free to send it again with a gentle reminder. Hey, this is the second time. Um, and that way I'll make sure that I answer it right away. And thank you. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I love this. Oh, it's so beautiful. Don't you ever feel that way? You're stitching on something and you think, oh man, this is so beautiful. Fill in. I mean, fill in. 310. Good old 310 fill in. Couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier. Well, I'd be happier if I had a cup of coffee with me. But... I can rectify that as soon as I'm done this thread. I'll go make a coffee. And on the menu today are drawstring uh, sock tote bags. So this morning before I started, uh, I, Nicholas and John have gone tubing with some friends. Now, what's tubing? If you don't live in, a, in an area that has snow, you'd never know what the heck tubing was. Tubing is an activity that we are lucky enough to do when there's when it's cold enough because it's like a ski hill it there doesn't have to be snow on the ground in order for there to be snow on the hill because they can make snow um, but it's nicer when it's real snow it's a hill so you go to a it's like a so imagine you were going to a ski place except you're going to a tubing place though I think some of the ski places have tubing now as well probably I'm not a skier. What gave it away? <laughs> Is there tubing at the ski? Right. Okay. So um, basically what it is, is you fling yourself down a hill on a big rubber inner tube and you pay to do it. <laughs> so, you know what? I actually have some video. So what I'm going to do is uh, at the end of this video, I will put in the video that John sent me uh, of him tubing with Nicholas and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sound out of it because as you can imagine it's very there, there's a lot of wind noise because they're going quite fast down the hill and that can really hurt your, your ears if you're listening to these with earphones on so what I'll do is at the very end of this video when I pop the music in I'll pop that video in of the tubing but you won't be able to hear them you'll just you'll just see them tubing down the hill and you can imagine how much fun it is not for me though it's not my cup of tea I'd rather stay in and stitch and I am oh the neighbor's car I just heard them getting in and out of their car so the dog might bark in a minute we'll see Whenever they beep their little car alarm thing, she tends to, though she is kind of sound asleep, so. All right, last stitch. There, <gasps> ta-da, look at that. I'm pretty pleased with myself, so let's, you know, I can't just, let's bring these needles to the back and then as soon as I say goodbye, I'll flip this over and sew them in. I use a Hearthside Craftworks floor frame. It is a floor frame purchased. Uh, Hearthside Craftworks is a business in Calgary, Alberta. 
They are handmade, each of them individually. They are a little bit expensive. However, they are worth every penny. Um, this mechanism, let me just slide it out a little bit. You can see, oh, I'm see, I'm still wearing my pajama pants. <laughs> Don't you sew in your pajama pants? Uh, though on the Friday after the grid group, we call them party pants. So this mechanism here, you can see the side here. See how it turns like that? So it's very easy to flip it around to the back. In episode 55, Floss Tube 55, I did a better um, video showing you the entire frame in case you're interested. At some point in that video, I don't think it's a super long episode. You could just flip through, I'm sure, until you found the part where I'm sh clearly showing the frame. So episode 55, there's a better um, little tour of the stand. Okay, so I really, I must get back to work. I've got to get those drawstring bags done. And uh, then it's time to take Luna for a walk and get ready to stitch tonight, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. until midnight is the Friday Off the Grid Facebook group. That's our weekly, usual weekly uh, stitching time together where we post pictures of our starts at 6 p.m. your time and then again at midnight when you finished and hopefully you've managed to fit in six full hours of stitching though usually there's a lot of um, social media chit chat and you know looking at everybody else's pictures and being a little bit distracted but it's all in fun and it's nice to feel like there are other people in the world stitching at the same time as you so that's it for me I have really missed my daily videos. I've missed chatting with you every single day. It's been a little bit strange actually uh, not having to put a video up. Though I guess yesterday was the only day that I didn't put up a video. So technically, but you see I didn't record on the first. I only just edited the video with Miss Patty. Oh, wasn't that fantastic? No, I'm not, I am not tuning my own horn. I am tuning Miss Patty's horn here because I had so much fun at her house again like it doesn't matter some of those pillows now I have I have googled over three years in a row and every time I see them I just fall in love with them all over again if you have no idea what I'm talking about the very last video on this channel you'll see the screen capture of um, two women one of them is me the other one is Miss Patty and she is just the most special person you could ever hope to know and her stitching is amazing and her house tour is always just so inspiring she's a lovely lady so if you haven't seen it yet enjoy and that's it for me I'm off to get my work done coffee first then I'll take that to my desk all right happy stitching happy weekend and I'll see you on Monday for a regular Monday floss tube take care <laughs>